In this video, learn how to set button interactivity and navigation to a slide deck presentation using Adobe Animate. Follow along as I'll take you through steps to set up keyframe animation, button appearance settings, and apply JavaScript actions to easily navigate through a project. So let's jump right into this video and start creating. On my screen, I have a slide deck presentation for a fictional university. It's called Fort Collins University. Have a look in my layers panel. I have three slides, slide one, which I'll turn off. There's slide two and there's slide three. And so the concept of this is to set up navigation using these interactive buttons. We'll just set up the first two campus life and research to trigger both slide two and slide three. Before we get started, I want to add one more layer here. So I'm going to click on this plus icon to create a new layer. And I'm going to call this actions. This is important because this is where we're going to add the interactivity, the actions to trigger those buttons. Next, I want to extend the duration of this timeline. So I'm just going to scroll over to the 10 second frame mark. That's the 300 frame mark. And I'm going to click that first frame. Hold shift and click the last one. Next, I'm going to press F5 on my keyboard to add frames. Great, those are in. So I'm just going to scroll back to the beginning of the timeline and place the playhead right at frame one. Great, next, let's set up the timeline animation. And for this, I'm going to place the playhead at the two second frame mark and we'll start on slide one. At the two second frame mark or 60 frame mark, I'm going to click that frame and I'm going to add a keyframe. Now I'm going to press F6 as a shortcut to do that. And basically I just want the slide one to play until it hits the two second frame mark. So in other words, I can delete everything after that. I'm going to click the 61 frame mark, go all the way to the end of the timeline and hold shift and click the last frame and just press delete or backspace on your keyboard. Now I'm gonna go back to the two second frame mark and I'm gonna add a keyframe on slide two at the two second frame mark. Remember F6 as a shortcut. Scrub the playhead to the four second frame mark. Place your cursor there again at that frame and press F6 again. Now we can delete everything prior to the two second frame mark on slide two. So I'm gonna click that first one Hold shift, click the last one in that first sequence there. That would be the 59th frame and press delete. Also go to the 121st frame, scroll all the way to the end of the timeline while holding shift, click that very last frame and press delete or backspace to get rid of those extra frames there. Now I'm gonna go back to the four second frame mark, which is the 120 frame mark. And in this case, I'm gonna click on slide three and press F6 to add a keyframe there. And I want this to play out to the very end. So in other words, I have to just get rid of these prior frames. So click the first frame on slide three, hold shift and click that last frame in this sequence. So that would be the 119th frame and press delete. Now we can go back to the beginning of the timeline and have a look. If I press return to play that, basically all that's doing is going through all three of the frames or the slides, I should say. I'm gonna go back to the beginning again and place the playhead at frame one. Next, let's add a stop action to the first frame, an important step for this to all work properly. I'd like you to click on the actions layer and we're gonna be adding what's called a stop action to frame number one on the actions layer so that the animation doesn't loop when the project is launched. For this, we'll need what's called the code snippets panel. You can see I have mine open here already. I have it docked in my workspace. And to access this, just go to window and code snippets. Now, because this is an HTML5 canvas, we're going to target the HTML5 canvas folder here and I'm just gonna click that arrowhead to collapse. And we want timeline navigation, so go ahead and collapse that. And I want to double click stop at this frame. 
And you can see that adds just a bit of code here, this dot stop parenthesis, and then a semicolon. And that just ensures that the animation doesn't loop or doesn't play when the page is launched. So we can go ahead and collapse the actions layer back. And next we're gonna focus on our two buttons, campus life and research. So I'd like you to click campus life first, go up to modify and let's convert that to a symbol. You can also press F8 as a shortcut, convert to symbol. And I'm just gonna name this campus life. And the type, you wanna make sure that that is a button. Now it might default to movie clip. Just click that drop down and choose button and click okay. Let's do the same thing for research. Click the research button, go up to modify and convert to symbol. I'll just call this research. Again, ensure that the type is set to button and click OK. Now, because these are buttons, we can add a little bit more interactivity to these. So I'm gonna double click Campus Life and you can see that drives into its own timeline, almost like the isolation mode in Adobe Illustrator. The same applies here. You can see that I have a tab here, Scene 1, which is the main scene in my project, and Campus Life button. So I'm, I'm in its own timeline and you can see in this timeline, I have an up state, over and down. Those are the three that we'll focus on here. So the over is basically just the hover state. So I'm gonna click that, press F6 to add a keyframe. Now, because this is a grouped object, you're gonna to have to double click a few times to get to the color fill. And you can see, once you see it highlight like that, you've got it. I'm gonna click the fill here and I'm just going to sample this lighter purple here from the project, click that. And I'm gonna click Campus Life to go back to the button, Campus Life. I'm gonna press the down state layer, click on that and press F6 to add another keyframe. Now for this, I'm gonna be using the transform panel, which is docked on my right workspace here. And just ensure that the, the constraint link is checked and I'm going to make the scale width to 90% and you can see that changes the height of that as well. And have a look, if I scrub through this, we have our up state, which is the normal state, the hover state, and the clicked down state. So again, that just adds a little bit more interactivity to our project here, to our slide deck. Once you've done that, click scene one to go back to the main scene. Let's apply the same settings to the research button. So click that, double click it, and you can see we're in the research timeline here. Click on the over frame and press F6 to add a keyframe. Double click a few times until you highlight the background there to change the color. And you can see in my color and style drop down here, click the fill icon and then just sample this lighter purple color. I'm gonna go back to the research button, which so just takes me back to my timeline here. Click the down state and press F6. Go to your transform window and let's scale down the scale width to 90%. And you can see that changes the height as well. And you can see if we scrub through this, we have our over and then down over and back to up and you can click on scene one to go back to the main scene. Next, we'll add instance names to the button so we can apply the timeline navigation actions. I'm gonna click on campus life again and you can see in the properties panel, under the object tab, there's a field called instance name and I'm gonna call this campus underscore BTN button short form. Let's do the same for research. Go ahead and click that instance name here is research underscore btn. Now we can add the actions to our buttons. So I'm gonna click campus life. Make sure that you're on frame one when you're doing this. I'm gonna go back to code snippets and under the HTML5 canvas timeline navigation, I'm going to double click, go to frame and stop. And you can see that it adds more code on top of our stop action that we set previously. Now there's nothing you really have to do other than focus on this last line where it says this dot go to and stop. And you can see the number five in parenthesis. 
Let's change that to 61 to represent frame 61 in our timeline. I'm going to close the actions panel for now. And let's do the same for research. Click it once, go back to code snippets and double click, click to go to frame and stop. And you can see it applies the same code, but we just have to change this number from five to 121. That represents the 121st frame in the timeline. Collapse actions and those buttons have been set. Now the slide deck presentation has additional buttons on slide two and slide three. If I scrub to the two second frame mark, you can see I have an index home button that I want to have triggered back to slide one. The same button is placed on slide three. You can see that in the upper right hand corner. Now if I go back to the two second frame mark on slide two, I'm gonna click that index button, go up to modify and let's convert that to a symbol. Now I'm gonna call this index one, ensure the type is set to button and click okay. Let's go to the four second frame mark and let's click the index button up top, modify, convert to symbol, and this will be index two. Again, make sure that it is set to button and click OK. I'm gonna go back to the two second frame mark in the timeline and click on that index button. Now I wanna do the same interactivity that we applied to the main index buttons with the hover and down appearance states. So I'm going to double click. Remember that will drive into its own timeline. In the timeline, click the over frame and press F6. Remember, you're going to have to double click a few times to get to the background. There it is there. Click the fill icon and then just sample with your eyedropper tool the lighter purple in the project here. Go back to index one. I'm gonna click the down frame here. Press F6 to add a keyframe. And in this case, remember, let's just go to the transform panel and scale the scale width to 90%. And you can see it also changes the scale height. If I scrub through, we have our normal state our hover state, which is the over state, and the down click state. Good, click scene one. Let's go back to the main timeline. Scrub to the four second frame mark and let's do the same thing. Double click, click over, press F6 to add a keyframe. Double click a few times, keep double clicking. Because it's grouped, you're gonna have to. Click fill and then sample the lighter purple. Let's click index two to go back to the index two timeline. Click the down frame and press F6 to add a keyframe. And remember in this case, we're just going to scale that down to 90%. If you think 90% is too much, you could do 95, whatever you like. Again, if I scrub through, it's good to check that that is operating the way you want. Yep, looks good. I'm gonna go back to scene one. Don't forget to give the index buttons instance names. I'm going to scrub to the two second frame mark. Let's click that first index button and you can see in the instance name, we have to fill that. I'm gonna call this index one underscore BTN. Scrub to the four second frame mark or the third slide. Click the index button and let's call this index two underscore BTN. Now we can add the actions to the index buttons. So let's scroll back to the two second frame mark and move over two frames to the 62 frame mark. This is where we're gonna add the action to trigger back to slide one. Let's click on the index button on slide two, go to code snippets and let's double click, click to go to frame and stop. Now in this case, we wanna change the number in the parenthesis to zero. You would think it's number one for the first frame, but it's actually zero. So just type in zero and let's close the actions panel. By the way, you know that the action has been applied when you see that little A symbol above the keyframe in the timeline. 
Let's add the action to the second index button. So let's scroll to the four second frame mark and then move over two extra frames. So in this case, it'll be 122 frames. Let's click on the index button, go to code snippets, and let's double click, click to go to frame and stop again. And let's change that five to frame zero. We can close the actions panel here. And next we'll test out the work. To preview the project in a web browser, let's just click this play button in the upper right hand corner. Go ahead and click that. That will launch the project in the web browser or default browser of your choice. Here's the slide presentation in my web browser. And you can see I can hover over the first two buttons. Those rollover or hover states work just fine. I'm gonna click, you can see there's my down state. I'm gonna release. It takes me to slide two. I'm gonna click index, takes me back to the main slide. I'll click research, there's slide three. And I can click index and it takes me back to the main page. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video on how to create button interactivity and navigation in Adobe Animate. If you'd like to learn more about Animate and HTML5, check out this playlist right up here. Until next time, take care and keep creating.